On this episode of Greco Fabulous, a seller from my past reaches out and asks if I know anybody that is interested in video games. Guilty! It's my birthday! Hey everybody, Greco Fabulous here, and even though I haven't received anything free from my subscribers in over a week, I'm still putting out fire content. You know, it's really disgusting how much you guys take advantage of me. How can you sleep at night? But I'm a professional, so I'll press on. So you remember back in October of 2018 when I showed off that life-changing Power Rangers haul? Of course you don't, because you're too busy not sending me things. Just breathe. So at the end of that transaction, and as a best practice for any transaction going forward, you want to leave the door open. Did you leave the door open, Porter? Did you leave the door open, Retta? Hmm? Well, somebody left the door open. By saying, hey, if you come across anything else, hit me up. Because it just makes sense. From the seller's perspective, you have a serious buyer on speed dial, and as the buyer, you get spoon-fed an opportunity. It's efficient! Now, despite how much sense that makes, you're probably never, ever, ever gonna hear from these people again. Never, ever, ever. So feel free to blast them in your social media of choice. I, myself, still prefer live journal. So much teen angst in high school. Had to jot it all down. So you'll understand my surprise when I receive a text message 10 months later. Wow, that's a lot of Nintendo. So if you want to take this all in, feel free to pause the video at this point and browse at your leisure suit Larry. But if you're like me and have the attention span as small as my view count, here's the Cliff Notes version. We have five boxed NES sets. A one, a two, a three, a four, a five, ah ah ah. Ranging from the control deck to a challenge set, two action sets, and that can barely fit in his britches sports set. All in working condition with the styrofoam, mounds of paperwork, even down to the accessories that time forgot. Now I'm not saying each of these is 100% fresh off the truck complete, but I was surprised at how well preserved some of them were. So you can't have a handful of systems without a gaggle of games to put in them, and the bells of the ball for this lot were these complete inbox versions of The Legend of Zelda 1 and 2, Final Fantasy, and Raid on My Bunghole. It's a hidden gem. It's a hidden gem. Best played with two players. And just to show you that I can be loosey-goosey as well, this Nintendo Famicom system with a few games was pretty balls. Pretty balls? Does that work? Fun fact, if you want to get that RF switch working on an NTSC television, you gotta tune that sucker to channel 96 or 97. 
Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. So this has been a pretty fancy haul so far, but you know I can't stop there. Cause uh, I don't know if you've heard, but there's a new sheriff in town. Sega! You better get your parents permission, cause we just enabled the blood code. Ah yes, the way cooler older brother of the console wars. Now no matter where you stand, you gotta give Sega their seat at the table. And this barely watched video is no exception. Some of the fan favorites from this haul was this Lion King Edition box Sega Genesis console, a box Game Gear with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 to go along with it, and the rarefied air that is the Sega Nomad. Now if my spoiled ass didn't have one growing up, you know this thing is a diamond. Oh, and for all my AARP card carrying members, we also have some Atari stuff in there. Huh? Remember fiddling your joysticks? Those were the days, boomer. All right, here's your soup for dinner. And the last part of the haul, but also the main reason why we got called in the first place, was this tub of toys. Mainly filled with G.I. Joe, with a few guest appearances by some other toy lines. So for everything you saw here, the grand total paid was $550. Now obviously a lot of time has passed between then and now, so I can give you an update on what exactly we did with all of this stuff. And I didn't just sell it, so don't think like you know me. If you knew anything about me, about what I want, you would hit that subscribe button and the little bell ding-a-ling so you know when new videos come out. I'm tired of people asking me like, where you been? Oh, I don't know, making videos every week? Damn, Gina! So for myself, I decided to hold on to a complete inbox version of the action set. Growing up, I had the whole trackpad and all that stuff, but as far as like the bread and butter, you had your console with Mario, and the zapper with Duck Hunt. That's what everybody grew up with. So for me, I definitely want to keep one of those guys in my collection. And then staying true to my roots, I had to hang on to that Sega Nomad, just because of how freaking cool it is. Now granted, I don't have any kind of attachment to it. I didn't have a Nomad growing up. Even though I was super spoiled, I was not spoiled enough to go gaming on the go with my Genesis games. And on the flip side, my buddy definitely kept some G.I. Joes for himself, that Game Gear set, and this copy of Superman for the Atari. Which, depending on when you look, is surprisingly valuable. But I'm sure I'll need to wrestle that away from him when my bookie comes calling. If I had a Patreon, that's exactly where your money would be going. Full disclosure. So I don't remember the exact financials of it. Okay, sorry, it's not up here. But I can confidently say that when we just take into account the video games, even after everything we kept, we still profited at least $300. And a majority of that came from a local buyer who pretty much took all the box systems off our hands. I love when that happens. It's so much more convenient, and in this case, it's not a situation where there would have been a huge price gap between what I could get online versus what I got locally. So it, it worked out swimmingly. Yes. <laughs> Why am I holding a tray? Am I some kind of sassy waitress? So it was definitely a worthwhile purchase, and it opened up this whole new world to me of like refurbishing systems and bringing them back to life. And not only that, but I'm having fun with it. Like everyone romanticizes about um, you know, having to whip out a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol and blowing on games to get them to work. Everybody forgets that at one point, these things used to just turn on. And getting it back to that point is just, it's just pure bliss, honestly. And on top of that, I'm getting a little dangerous around the Sega Nomad. So far, I've replaced the outer screen because it was a little scratched up. And now I'm kind of messing around with soldering because the AC port on it is a little wonky. You know, depending on how it's plugged in, it might just turn off on you. And most importantly, I guess I have a follow-up contact now. Somebody out there looking out for me, a relationship that I can continue to exploit. I mean, I mean water. Water and grow. Water and grow. We flourish together. All right, everybody, so that's gonna be it for this video. Throwing some, a little bit of video game action at you because that's been a little lacking on my channel, but I am a well-rounded individual, especially during this corona crisis. I am very well-rounded, almost as well-rounded as I used to be before keto, so I'm getting very sad and depressed, but luckily I have you. You, Mr. Phone, because I'm not talking to anybody directly. Um, there are no human beings in my life. Just technology. Okay, I'm gonna go eat some pizza. Like a whole box of it.
not going to reheat it either because what's the point? 